What's up, everybody? Today we are opening a booster box of Mithril. This is a recent TCG Kickstarter that has just been fulfilled. I got my product fairly recently, so I got one booster box and this awesome playmat. Check this out. I believe this was a random playmat. Yeah, it, it was. I'm certain this was a random randomized. They had a couple ones you can get, and I'm really happy with the one that I got. And uh, there's a little spec there. And then check this out too. I can, I didn't even remember that I got this. I got two of these comic books that they got in. Look at that. Only $1.99. That's pretty nostalgic right there. It's got Kickstarter on it. And I got two of these. One of them has some dinged up corners and the other one looks a little better. But my plan is to send these comics, both of them to CGC, to hopefully get the CGC 9.8, get them graded. And I'm gonna have them pressed. So hopefully maybe that'll help with the other one's uh, corners get a better grade on that. But the other one looks really good. And first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna open up these uh, promos that it came with. So let's see, whoa, look at that. So we got quite a few uh, promos in here uh, that we're gonna look at. And let me stop real quick, because my, my, my focus is off on my camera here. There we go. Okay, so we got it centered there. Okay, much better. And let's take a look at these promos and then open up this booster box. It is a 24 pack booster box, so that is what I like to see. I like kind of the uh, the fewer packs. It just as a content creator, it's a little bit uh, easier. Now I'll just take these out of the plastic later, but we got the foiling is really nice. It's got like kind of a rainbow foil sheen, and then it is layered, so you have the subject popping out. We got Lord Eldrion, Feather Striders. That looks nice. Reminds me of some like flesh and blood equipment there. Abyssal Lord. Now the theme of this is like adult. Uh, sort of Western fantasy or medieval kind of, uh, sort of like Magic the Gathering, I guess. The gameplay, now I haven't played this at all. We got Dragon's Nest here. I don't, I'm not familiar with the gameplay. It's kind of like Hearthstone from just the you know, very brief glimpses I've seen. It looks kind of like it plays like Hearthstone. And another reason that it gives me Hearthstone vibes is this is a digital game as well as a physical. So that is what kind of stands Mithril apart. It's kind of like a more sort of MTG oriented uh, Hearthstone, in my opinion. That's kind of how I would characterize it, and not actually having played it, mind you, again. Uh, so I want to be fair in that aspect. It might have some important differences. Dragonfire Inferno, and then that's really cool right there. Era, Era Starfire. Okay. So nice promos. Man, I got a lot of this for getting just one booster, bo uh, booster box. This is a pretty good promo set. I think maybe they had uh, quite a few stretch goals there. So let's go ahead and check out this box. Here it is. Now I got to tell you, the, the box that these promo packs were in came in a cardboard box like this. It was actually, I'm going to show you. Now I, this is one, the one complaint I have is I did not like how they did this. It was attached right here like this, or it might've been the other side. And then you had to fold it off and tear it off. And then you've got this strip left over. And then I tried to kind of like uh, inch this uh, this strip off. It was like glued to the plastic, ended up ripping the seal. So I didn't like that because once I took off that that promo cardboard box, it left that strip there. And you know, if you wanted to, to, to display this, uh, or collect it, it, it just feels weird having this kind of tacked on on the side. So I didn't like that, never seen that before. Um, the rest of the box looks amazing. I love the art on this. Uh, you got the Kickstarter stamp there. Nice logo with the mithril and the plastic seal. Love the colors with the red and green. You got this nice little uh, gold with the M there uh, for the sticker there. And then on the back, so this is from Legend Games. Now, again, this is a digital game also. So you'll see on here, uh, download on Steam. And then uh, I don't know if you, can, you wanna scan that QR code or just look this game up. You'll be able, be able to find it on uh, Steam pretty easily, I, I'd imagine. It You get nine cards per pack and a digital redemption code per pack. So I am not gonna be playing this game. I just don't have kind of time and interest to do it um, with everything I'm doing right now, but uh, I you know, just like the physical products. So I'll, I'll be uh, giving away those codes in this opening. They did a really great job with the uh, display box, I think. It looks really nice. I like how they show off, uh, what's this? Enter the Realm, the first uh, 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 set here. And then I like how they have the, the cards here on the side. That looks really nice. Overall, just a great product. I think they did great. Really nice promo cards. Just my, my first time looking at a card in hand. And the foiling looks nice. Art is beautiful. That's something that really drew me to this. And then the comics were a nice surprise. I like uh, when games do that, when they have like a poster or, you know, a comic or some other kind of merchandise in there. So here we go. We're opening this thing up. And uh, 24 packs, again, nine cards per pack. So this shouldn't be a, a real long opening. And uh, it'll be interesting to see, get a kind of a feel for the product. 
and uh, tell you uh, my impressions. So when I saw this, you know, I, I thought it was cool that it had a, a digital game. Y'all have to tell me about what that game is like if y'all have tried that out on Steam. And I like when there's, you know, even if I'm not going to participate in the digital version, I think it's cool when a game is able to, to do something to help s make them stand out in the crowd. You know, so this is the, you know, physical plus digital uh, game. I haven't really seen that before. I don't think I can name any other game, you know, besides like Pokemon and DG Arena. That, you know, obviously they have their their clients. But that's that's a cool idea. And so here's a box topper. That's cool. So we're going to open that up first. Uh, actually, maybe we'll just we'll wait. Oh, there's, oh, there's just a middle divider. Okay, so let's actually uh, do like 12 packs and then we'll open that up. So here are our packs here. We do have varying pack arts. we got this dragon here. Some kind of, oh, oh some uh, uh, some other character. I don't know who that is. And cat person, cat mage. Looks like just those three. Very nice. So I like, I like the pack design. They've got a nice aesthetic to this game. I do really enjoy it. I was very attracted to the art, the design of the cards. I like that it, again, was digital. It had digital client along with it. We're going to save that. And then, um, yeah, it just, it, it has a, a, a nice design to it. Reminds me of Hearthstone, but I'm sure it's probably a little bit different. Um, but it's nice to see something, you know, uh, that is not Hearthstone that is like that. So let's open up our first uh, pack here. Get my focus right. Okay, so we have equipment. That's our uh, first card type that we can see here. Looks like maybe like attack, defense. We're going to just do the first few packs kind of slowly. We're going to move a little bit faster after that. Maybe a resource cost up here of four. That was that four. Maybe that's what that four is about. And then we have the uh, illustrator, Varva, uh, Varvara Tishenko. Okay, cool. We've got Rejuvenation. And that was, I guess, a common because it was one of the first cards we pulled. And then they have a little circle down there for that. Okay, Rejuvenation. I haven't done an opening in a while, so I have to kind of warm back up to this. And what was so that was a spell. So we have equipment, we have a spell. Spell object chest. Very nice. So. I guess resource costs, and then, you know, I don't know what it means that they have zero, zero here for attack and defense, I guess. And then it says, you, you hear it whispering, Elvin, pay three life and draw one card. That's one thing I noticed about this game that I love that they did that's very different from anything else I've seen, is they have the flavor text before the card ability. I really like that as someone who's a collector and really enjoys the lore of games. Um, you know, that flavor that gives it kind of an identity that brings you into the world a little bit is there before it gives you, you know, like here it says blocker, but before that it says, you know, a clever and cunning creature, adept at navigating the rugged terrain of the wild. And they have that first, usually the flavor text is right at the bottom. So that's really, really neat. That's different. You know, I respect, I really like to back and I enjoy when games are able to figure out subtle ways to be kind of different that have their their own charm to it all right so we had spells we've got equipment and now we have a human wizard so we have i would guess those three types right it doesn't seem like a really super complex game um and i like that you know i like when i like that about dream book i like uh, games that have seemed like they have like they'd be easy to kind of figure out how to play realm gargoyles so this looks like just you know a big baddie right you know high resource cost six attacks six defense my guess and then he is a blocker i don't know what that means if he can only block or what and also check this out so we had an uncommon here so we had the circles now we have the squares meaning we're getting to our uncommon so we'll make our own little different pile there for that here we have gold coin spell object coin so you have i guess some some cards that are spells and objects that's interesting okay and then we have Drake of the Sky, so another rarity there, triangle, so I guess like a rare. I do have another card behind this. Maybe that's our code card. So we have a kind of a more powerful creature there. And then, okay, so very sim simple uh, card design, uh, card rarity, um, pack layout. I like that. Here's our code. So digital redeem card, I'll flash that um, every time. So y'all want to try this game out and use those, that's fine. Uh, we got commons, uncommons, and then our one rare. All right, so it'll be interesting to see you know, when we get a foil, how that's going to work, right? Is that going to be in addition to the rare or does it take the rare slot? We're going to see. So once we start hitting some duplicates, we're really going to kind of go a little bit faster. So we had fireball six. So be, so, uh, <laughs> so be baking an archer. So creature, look at that guy, worm of the realm. Uh, I love how this is, you know, you can see the, the hearthstone vibes, right? You have like these basic attack, defense resource. And then when you look at it, um, like the screenshots I saw from the digital game, Mew Archer, that is a swift ability. So I guess maybe they can, that's like haste, or maybe they attack first when you're attacking each other, uh, when you're exchanging damage. 
uh, Orc Mage, Cure on the Mana Weaver. So this guy has a, you know, has a mage, reduce your opponent's mana by one until your next turn. So, so it's pretty simple. And, and then there's like, you know, a little bit of abilities to add some more nuance to the gameplay. But when I was looking online in different pictures and things, um, they, it looks kind of like Hearthstone because you kind of lay out your, your cards, like in a, you know, in a lane, and then it looks like you can attack, you can choose to attack, uh, different creatures or go straight for the player, unless I guess they choose to block. I'm not sure how that works. Um, but that's kind of what it reminded me of. Um, so we have Elven Blacksmith, so we're in the uncommon slots. And then here's our rare, Ancient Gold Urn. Very cool. Zero, zero, resource cost of two, draw two cards. So I feel like this would be a very easy game to pick up and play. So that's nice. You know, if you're looking for something casual, but has some nice, uh, you know, kind of like MTG art, kind of, you know, games of, Game of thrones -y, I guess, that kind of um, uh, fantasy style. Uh, this is definitely going to be something you're going to like. We got Demon Knight. Wolf's Fury, we got a spell here, deals two damage to all opponent's creatures. So yeah, I'm definitely getting some magic vibes here, some Hearthstone vibes, uh, definitely, you know, some clear inspirations, but a very, very different uh, art style for that. And then, uh, you know, simple layout, just a, a cool game uh, with having the Steam client launching at the same time. And uh, y'all, if y'all played this game, y'all are looking for Mithril, you're looking that up on YouTube, you come across this opening, let me know how that game is. Tell me how it's going. I know they had an alpha. I think it's it's been, actually they've had the client going since before um, this release. And it'll be interesting to see if they do more of these, if they do another expansion, if they keep it, keep it going for a while. Um, be kind of interesting to see like where they go for the, the first expansion. Here's our rare, Fickle Eye, the King, Goblin King. So he is, gives your creature blocker. So um, maybe he affects another creature there. I'm not sure. Here's our code card. So, so far, uh, yeah, really enjoying this opening. It is not overly complicated. It's not like an MTG booster box, collector booster box, where you have to have like a million different, you know, it's very com common, uncommon, rare. That's it right there. So Nibblick the Warrior. And we can kind of start to move a little bit faster here since we've seen some of the cards. Uh, have a kind of a feel for the the uh, defense, the you know the attack, how they have an ability. They have the flavor text before the ability. That's something I really like. So there are commons there. Flamefire Dragon, Wilderness Bear. I fixed my... Uh, <clears throat> I got out of, out of focus there. And then Igus Merman. <laughs> okay, whoa, cool. Taking me back when I was playing Magic... Uh, when I was growing up, I was I had a Merfolk deck. I loved playing uh, Lord of Atlantis, Sunken City, all those different kinds of Merfolk creatures. Merfolk is a, a fun archetype to play. We got Dragon's Fireball. So some of these are starting to see some duplicates. Let's see. Do we know how big this set is? So I got 90 there. We do have some, uh, you know, your card numbers down on there. I don't know how big the set is. I'll probably just uh, try to do like a binder set of this with what I have. I don't know how the um foiling works on this so what do we have that was our commons we got two uncommons i wonder if they even have foils we haven't seen any foils in this yet r1 spike dragon if there are no foils that'll make it easy to do a binder set that's for sure so maybe i can just do it out of this box <laughs> we'll see i have to pick up another box or two or pick up some lots online and uh put together this set uh, i have my sorcery tcg binder and I have not put too many Sorcery TCG cards in there because I only got the pre-con decks, which I think I'm going to sell just because those prices have gone up so much. And I'm going to keep my promo pack cards and put them in the binder. And then I think I'm just going to use that binder to put these in there uh, and make however complete a binder set I can. Tome of Mists, Realm Sea Dragon. So a lot of like dragon creatures in here. So what, two uncommons? We get uh, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, so we have six commons, two uncommons. And then a rare and your code card. So let's, uh, hopefully we can hit a foil pretty soon. That would be cool. Maybe they don't do foils. Maybe they're only doing the foils for those promos. You know, maybe they, uh, maybe they're super rare. Maybe they're just really hard pulls. Now, okay, that's cool. I like that angel card. That's pretty neat. I haven't seen one of those yet. Oh, oh, whoa. Hey, speaking of which. They do have a foil back here. I just see it. You see that shine? Look at that. Oh, that looks like it's going to be a big hit. I know they have something higher than rare because they said it on the box. They had, it looks like they had four, maybe five rarities there. Okay, so we got uncommon, dragon claw. Let's see what this hit is. In the rare slot. Wow, look at that. That's beautiful. Foil, a king's sword. I like how it's not just king's sword. It's a king's sword. That is awesome. A sword fit for a king. Looks heavy. 
No, no ability, just flavor text, and then five. Looks like it got five damage it does. And I don't know what the zero means. Can it just be like attacked to like discard it or something? Um, very interesting. And then two uh, resource costs, not too many resources. That is beautiful. First edition Kickstarter, a King's Sword. That's going right there in the middle there. That is beautiful. So yeah, I guess, you know what? That's my question now. Are these like certain rarity? This is a diamond, look at that. It's like, a, or a star, a little star rarity. Maybe those all come in foil unto themselves. Like maybe they don't have a foil common and a foil com uncommon and a foil rare. Maybe those are all non-foil. And when you hit a foil, that means you hit one of those star rarities. That's really cool. I like that. You know, I'm, I'm kind of old school. I don't like things to be too complicated. I don't like when there's a foil version of every single card. Uh, I like, you know, being able to kind of figure things out, not having to do a whole lot of research to figure out everything I need. Now, now this is like one of the mascot characters. This is Princess Alicia because she was on a playmat you could get. And she was on the box, right? I think uh, maybe it was on the box or she's on the comic book. Nice. Princess Alicia. So I wonder if you can get a, a super rare version of her. And, you know, I like going into this and not having done a ton of research and just kind of figuring it out for yourself. It's so exciting. Like when we hit that King Sword, man, that was that was awesome. So, all right, we're going to move a little bit faster now. So there's Iron Edge. There's another one. We got Zila Fallen Archer. That reminds me of like the Fallen Angel card from uh, 7th edition in Magic. Dripping, da uh, dripping, dripping Dagger, Iron Guard. Uh, health. Okay, so there's commons. We got Health Potion. Mana Potion, look at that. That's pretty cool. Okay, and then Dragon Tooth Amulet for our rare. Redemption card. And it's going to be interesting when we get through about halfway through the through the box. And uh, it be interesting to see, you know, is that like a one hit, one hit per box kind of rarity? Or are we going to get another one? Is there something bigger we can even get? Um, I might have to pick up another box or two of these. I don't know, depending on what it's going to be like to try to finish out some of this set. Um, I haven't looked at the market for this at all. Look at that, Dion Demon Lord. And I wonder like how many of these guys you can have in your deck. If you can have like one or more of those, um, I don't know. So not getting too many duplicates in the rares, honestly. Starting to see some of the commons. Um, I, don't, I don't really think we've seen that many duplicates in the uncommon slot, honestly, either. Um, okay, Healing Rain, I've seen that one. Ancient Queen Amulet. I've seen that uh, Savage Rage. That's pretty pretty cool. I think that was on the on the box or uh, on in some marketing or something. I saw that art somewhere. Wilderness Snake. We got Centaur. Cent I think that's supposed to be Centaur. T A U R. Maybe it's maybe they're playing with it. Centaur or maybe that's a typo. I don't know. That's okay. You you see that kind of stuff all the time in TCGs like typos, error cards, you know, and they fix it in a later set or something. Uh, but I think that's supposed. I think that's a misspelling centaur. I don't think they, unless they're kind of like playing with it. Centaur archer. Yeah, I think it's supposed to be A U R, not U A R. Rejuvenation. I like the art on that. So here we have Mock Daddy Faizo Emery. So I'm sure I, I didn't get that name right, but um, they've got a lot of great artists. Look, Y U Adinata. So Famine Abdullah. Nick. How many? Man, they've got a lot of artists in here. Represent Nicoletta Stavaracha. Famine Abdullah, we saw him. Dan Pis, uh, uh, Piskiv. Dan Tran. Whoa. Bavar Tashenko. Man, they've got a lot of artists. Awesome. Res you know, mad props uh, to you all hiring artists and, you know, helping uh, artists out there get their work in these in these really cool games. That's really cool. I think we had some uh, uncommons in there, actually. Yeah, we had this guy in there. Uh, I really love that about... Okay, we're into, uh, let's go ahead and open this box topper here because we're, we're halfway through the box. I love that about um, these Kickstarter games. You know, they are, you see a lot of artists, you know, able to, to, to find work and, and uh, a vehicle to do a lot of their work in this. So here's our uh, foil rare box topper. And we have not, a reminder, we have, this is, this is the second foil we've gotten in this box and it wasn't from regular booster box. It looks really nice. Hooded Triads. Let's put that down there. So maybe you can only get a few like foil rares as the box topper. I don't know. This is, this is all we've gotten in the foils for this box. So let's go on. We've got the, the last 12 packs here. I'm going to start to move a little bit faster. I don't want to be the, this be super, super long video. And see, we're starting to see some duplicates here. Fallen Angel, you know, Wilderness Snake. Uh, we got Mana Potion for our Uncommon, Lord of the Mew, and then new card here. 
This reminds me of like one of those bows from Flesh and Blood, a Aerilis's Moon Bow. That's cool. That's like something from a Moon Bow. It's like a World of Warcraft. That is a World of Warcraft weapon right there for sure. Redemption card. And let's, uh, so we're going to our next pack here. So yeah, really uh, starting to see a lot of duplicates, commons, uncommon slot, but not so much in the rare slot. Now uh, I'm getting kind of excited. I feel like it's going to be definitely manageable to maybe try to do a master set of this. That would be just so much fun. This is a magic potion now and health potion. Interesting to get those together. Elven spirit. So I think that's the first time we saw that card too. That's beautiful. I love the art on that. Waihu Adinata. Very nice. The artist just knocked it out of the park with Mithril. You know, you, you all found some amazing artists to do this stuff. Um, and a lot of these TCGs, they just they do have a, a lot of amazing art. That's, that's again, part of the reason I really am attracted to doing this. I don't think we've seen that person before, Alari the Hunter. Um, just seeing, you know, all, all of these different designs and uh, uh, themes and uh, mechanisms, you know, different kinds of uh, games that people come out with. Um, you know, you think you've seen it all and then there's just something so new and different and it finds its way, a way to be distinct and to, uh, stand out from the crowd. And that, that's really cool. You know, that's why I really like to, to, to get the, these kinds of things and like, uh, on, on Kickstarter and then like those, those comic books, you know, like how many of those are going to be around, you know, it's just a, it's just a cool, not that they're going to be like a ton of money or anything, but it's just a cool thing to have, you know, uh, it's part of a time. Uh, for TCGs and, you know, more TCGs are going to come out and this is, they're just kind of like they're fun kind of um, uh, things to talk about. Uh, they're discussion pieces almost, you know. So we've got comments here. Look at that. That's beautiful. Ari Mermaid. Wow. So definitely a little bit of uh, maybe like fairy tale kind of vibes too mixed in with fantasy. Just a lot of different kind of fantasy tropes, I think, and themes and creatures that you're seeing here. A lot of it kind of typical, you know, like mermaids, you know, merman, uh, king sword, you know, elves, uh, all this uh, this kind of typical fantasy stuff, which is really cool. You know, it's not it, it's not trying to be too original and creative. It is original and creative, but it's you know it's kind of embracing um, this sort of like almost like early MTG kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, uh, medieval kind of you know Lord of the Rings kind of inspiration. And I think that's that's really cool. We got giant eagle, scroll of defense. And then Griffin's Rage. And I'm convinced right now that the, you just don't get foils in this unless it's a box topper or it's unless it's one of these super rare cards like with this star foiling. and Because there are zero foils in here um, in any of these other packs. So if you're looking to play the game physically, it looks like you get good value for this. Uh, looks like you're getting a lot of duplicates in the commons. You're getting maybe some in the uncommons, but honestly, I feel like the duplicates in the, in the uncommon slot haven't been that bad. It does seem like the rares, maybe you need a couple of boxes if you want to get some multiple play sets of a different card. You know, I don't know, again, how many of each card you can play with. Something you're going to have to look up. Maybe check out the rules of this online or something. But, um, you know, it seems like it's definitely in reach for players. Uh, of course, you can just download the client and play it that way. You don't even need the physical cards, I guess. You can just play it on Steam. And then they do have some collectability with their physical stuff. You know, Flame Fire Dragon, that's cool. And uh, with these these super rare. So I like to see that. You know, you got to have that collectability in there. Now, whoever's watching this video and getting these codes first, you're getting a lot of uh, free cards here. And uh, tell me tell me if you got the cards, let me know in the com if you got the codes and they work for you, let me know in the comments below. That'd be great to know that they were put to use and that someone was uh, able to really enjoy them. Tell me how you're liking the game. Dark Old Wizard, Sorcerer's Jar, Wilderness Bear. Seen that guy before, I believe. Griffin of the Realm and Elven Hatchet. All right, so uh, get down to our last four packs. Do not anticipate getting another foil. Um, well, maybe we will. I, I'm kind of feeling like probably this is gonna be a once per box kind of thing. That's how I was just kind of feeling. Uh, but you know, nonetheless, looks like we're seeing a majority of the cards. Realm Gateway, that's a beautiful card. And I, I'm glad I backed this. You know, I only got this one booster booster box. I got the, you know, it. It seemed like good value, though, with all those promos that you got from, I guess, those were stretched goal things. Um, you got, I got a nice hit in this box. I'm really happy with that. Now, I want to know if someone grades these cards. Like, I would love to send this to CGC, get that King Sword uh, graded, and just, like, you know, have that be a really unique part of my card collection, you know, from, from Mithril, from backing that. So, um, yeah, let me know what you all think about the game, what you all think about the art. Have you tried to play this game? Let me know what questions you have about it. 
uh, even though you know I don't know much more than I've already kind of shared in this video today. But look at that King's Ring. So I wonder if I, you know, I wonder, I don't think, have we even gotten a King's Sword? I don't know. I don't think we've even gotten it outside of that super rarity version. Um, but maybe you can only get it in that super rare version. That would be pretty cool too. But then like for players, like how would they get that if they really need to play with it? I don't know. I feel like it would need like a non-rare version too, um, but maybe not. So yeah, I, I would assume maybe, you know, there would be some playable like uh, cheap version or, you know, budget version that you could get. Uh, maybe that'll come in a reprint or something. Relic of the Realms, or maybe they just want to maintain that rarity, even for the, you know, if that's a really playable card, maybe they just still want it to be like something really sought after, and you just want it for a deck just to play with it, and you're not a collector, you still have to pay up. That's pretty cool too. That's that's fine. I think there's it's, it's cool. it's cool with these games when you have a chase, I think. I mean, you don't want to overdo it, right? I mean, you, you know, player, I know with like Flesh and Blood, you know, the people complain they, they needed to get their cards reasonably well, so they have to, you know, balance that collectors and playability. That's a hard dynamic to really balance. All right, and this is our last pack, guys. Dragon of Winter Ward. Love the dragons in this. It's really, you know, I love how basic, you know, when they do these first sets, these like base sets, they, they keep it simple enough, right? You've got like your fire dragon, your ice dragon, and so forth. And, you know, it's just, you gotta be, it's gotta be palatable and easy to understand. They did a great job with their base set here with Mithril. All right, that's it, everybody. I loved opening this. This was such a fun box to open. Really glad I backed this game. Such a great hit. I really want to see if I can uh, grade this with somebody. CGC if I can, PSA, BGS, someone like that. Um, uh, one of those three would be great. Got this uh, box topper here. A lot of these promo cards and the two comic books. Just a great package. A uh, great value, in my opinion. All right, thanks so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you on another video very soon. Thank you.